All right, guys, we talked briefly in the last video about uh, voltage and uh, equipotential surfaces. Now it's time to talk about a somewhat related topic in simple electrical and circuit theory called capacitors and capacitance. So let's start off with talking about the concept of capacitance. Okay, so I want you to imagine that you have two charges. So let's call these two charges Q1 and Q2. So let's say that one is negative and one's positive. So that is uh, Q1 is negative, let's call it, and Q2 is positive. Now say that you want to keep these charges apart from one another. Well, understandably, that would require some work because uh, unlike charges are prone to, to uh, attract one another. So the key concept here is it takes work it takes work to keep unlike charges apart. And sort of the measure of how much work is being done is called, as you might imagine, capacitance. And when we talk about capacitance, we're talking about capacitors, which is a component in uh, electrical circuits. And the most common type of capacitor is parallel plate capacitors. And that sounds daunting, but it's not as bad as it looks. And actually, we will get later into this as it relates to circuits when we talk about uh, simple circuit theory. So we define capacitance. So we define capacitance as C, which is the ratio of Q to V. So capacitance is the ratio of the charge of the capacitor to the capacitor's voltage. And the unit, unit is a coulomb per volt, which is equal to a farad. And the word farad comes from Michael Faraday, who worked in the 19th century to uh, unify um, electromagnetism, which is actually a topic that we will be discussing later on down the road. So I know that I just mentioned parallel plate capacitors. And for a parallel plate capacitor, the capacitance is directly proportional to the area of each plate divided by the distance between the two plates. So we could write that numerically or mathematically as the capacitance for a parallel plate capacitor is equal to some constant of proportionality, which for right, for right now, we could just refer to as the constant of proportionality, but I will write it as epsilon naught, which is the uh, initial electromotive force, which is actually something that we'll talk about when we get to uh, electromagnetism, times the area of each uh, capacitor plate divided by the distance between them. So this is sort of straightforward. This is just sort of something that you need to commit to memory. So I'm going to erase this. And I should mention that the electric field vector between the two parallel plates is given by the magnitude of the electric field vector is equal to the change in voltage, so that is the electric potential difference, divided by the distance between the two capacitor plates. So the unit, so the unit for the magnitude of the uh, electrical field vector, which is interesting. We used to refer to it as a Newton per Coulomb, right? But here, we can also tell that a Newton per Coulomb, which is the unit for the magnitude of an electric field vector, is also equal to a volt per meter, because volt is obviously the unit for change in electric potential difference, and uh, the meter is a standard unit for uh, the distance between the plates. So now we have that uh, the magnitude of an electric field is equal to a Newton per Coulomb, which is also equal to a volt per meter. So one way to keep the parallel plates of a capacitor apart is to insert an insulator called a dielectric. So insert an insulator. Remember, an insulator is something that impedes an electrical current. Insert an insulator called a dielectric. 
Now, the key thing to note here is that the dielectric that you're putting in between the two parallel plates of the capacitor increases the capacitance, right? It increases the amount of work that's being done to keep the charges apart, you could think of it as. So we define the electrical constant, which is the, I'm sorry, the, the, the dielectric constant, which we could call K sub D, or you might see it as C sub D. We know that the magnitude of the electric field with the dielectric is equal to magnitude of the electric field without the dielectric divided by the dielectric constant. Uh, the dielectric constant is positive, and it is greater than 1. So obviously, if you have the magnitude of the electric field vector with the dielectric is equal to a positive value divided by a value that is uh, greater than 1, then you see that the magnitude of the electric field with the dielectric has decreased because you've put an insulator in between the two plates to impede the charge, or rather the, the current that would be flowing between them. Similarly, because an increase in capacitance corresponds to a decrease in electric field, which is pretty trivial, which is pretty trivial, then the capacitance with the dielectric is equal to the dielectric constant times the capacitance without the dielectric. Now, I just said that the dielectric constant is always greater than 1. So this would stand to reason that the capacitance with the dielectric is always greater than the capacitance without the dielectric. Because if you put a dielectric in between the two plates of said parallel plate capacitor, then you are increasing the amount of work that must be done to keep the two like char the I'm sorry, the two unlike charges apart. So I hope that this helped in giving you a brief overview of uh, the dielectric constant, dielectrics as a whole, capacitors, parallel plate capacitors, and capacitance. Thank you for joining me. I will join you in the next one, probably for simple circuit theory and going into electromagnetism. Thanks very much.